So this is our guest speaker for the night, Tom Fiscano. Fiscal uh, my, my name is Tom Fiscaldo, also known as One Eye on Patterson, and you know why? No. Because I live in Patterson. <laughs> okay. And I think he's taking photographs or video, and I want to copy and I want it autographed. <laughs> All right. Okay. So just for those of you who don't know him, Tom is an experienced beekeeper. He's a past president of one of our sister branches, Northeast, and he's actually beekeeper emeritus at the Northeast branch. So I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds good. Tonight, tonight he's going to share with us some of the uh, information he has and some of the things he does around apitherapy. We're not going to talk strictly about, but we're going to talk mostly about getting stung. Now, this is something that I brought just because it'd be of interest to most of you. Uh, they call it white face hornet and so on. And uh, uh, you get calls and they say, I have a beehive in my hedges. And you say, lady, a beehive is a wooden box that you, you keep honeybees in. Is that what you have in your hedges? And they say, no, it's a gray paper shell. And they come out and they sting you. Well, I say, um, I'll remove that and it'll be $150. And they say, wow. And then I say, well, if I don't get stung, I'll give you $50 off. And then when I get, I get done, I say, I was stung four times. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I just have it here for your education and enjoyment. And uh, that's covered by a paper shell. It's upside down. The small end is on the bottom. They enter and exit through one little hole. And my, my method of getting them is to use a vacuum cleaner at the hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, the, when they slow down and I can get close enough, I put a spray can up to the hole. And I don't care what kind of spray it is, it, it kills. All right, now, I started beekeeping and I got stung. Now, Sears Roebuck, my brother and I were school children and uh, I'm 85 years old now and uh, we ordered everything from Sears Roebuck and they told us when you've got everything assembled you give us a call and we send you a package of bees. What we never thought about was a smoker, veil, gloves, Everybody, everybody in the neighborhood had bees, and we always saw them work in bare hands. But we never thought of that. Now, um, the package came. And my brother and I, we had a conference. And we said, we don't want to get stung. How are we going to handle this? And uh, uh, the brain at work. We said, they'll sleep at night and we'll get up at midnight <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll only have one little flashlight <laughs> and we'll open the box and throw them in. Well, we learned a couple lessons. <laughs> they don't sleep at night. They crawl up everything that's vertical off the ground like telephone poles and your leg. And they uh, come to a flashlight. <laughs> I got 75 stings. And uh, that was how we started beekeeping and I kept, we kept into it for many, I kept into it for many years and now instead of every neighbor having a beehive, I think I'm the only one in Patterson with a beehive. Um, One day I got a phone call from the dog pound. Um, I had been out all day and he said, oh, I finally got you. This is a major emergency. Killer bees have taken over an automobile in Patterson at the farmer's market, the Italian market. And he says, what do we do? 
And I said, well, I'll go and see what I can do. And I, I go down there, and it turns out the street has been closed <laughs> for half a day. <coughs> the, uh, the, 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 play, the man's car is roped off with danger tape, and uh, there's television crews there from, what, well, Australia gave me a kick, and Nevada, and Chicago, and New York, and whatnot, and newspaper reporters, everybody is there. And I pull up, break the tape, and walk up, and, and uh, set up my vacuum cleaner to collect the swarm. Now, what had happened, this man went to go to the Italian market and a couple of scout bees came in his car. So he said, instead of closing the windows and locking the car, I'll leave the windows open. Well, the scout bees went upstairs and they brought back the whole family. <laughs> and he had a swarm hanging from the light in the center of the car. Like. <laughs> so I vacuum cleaned them up. And then I went and I said, let me have the keys of the car. And I drove the car around the block to blow the, the stragglers out. And I became famous. <laughs> I, uh, that one move, uh, uh, I mean, I, the phone didn't stop ringing. And, and the, the, anyway, uh, we got the bees out of the man's car. And I charged him $30. And uh, I went home for supper. And there was a line of people at the door. And it stretched around the block. And I said, wait a minute, what's going on here? And they said, we're sick and we want to be stung. And I said, if you're sick, you go to a doctor. You don't come to a beekeeper because <laughs> I'm a beekeeper and I don't know a thing about being sick. <coughs> and they said, oh no, bee stings cure MS. And we are all members of an MS group and we want to be stung. And I says, I won't do it. Get out of here. And I went to eat supper and somebody comes to the back door, somebody comes to the front door, you know, and phone rings, please, please, uh, we want to be stung, stung. I said, no, no, no. The next morning when I got up, they didn't wake me up, but there was an assembly of maybe 100 people on the front porch. And they said, we want to be stung. And I chased them away. I chased them away three or four days. And finally I came out one day, and the group came up to me and a woman knelt, 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 got on her knees and she went into prayer. And she said, God, we have a man in front of us who has the medicine and he refuses to give it to the sick. <laughs> Will you please move his hands, dear God? <laughs> and I said, my hands don't oppose God. I said, what do you want? We want to be stung. I don't know how to do it. Oh, you take a pair of tweezers and you go to a beehive and you sting people, I guess. So I marched them in the front door, out the back door to a beehive, and I says, here, next, <laughs> next, next. Did about 40 people a day. And I was getting stung. A tremendous amount of times, too. I, I, I would have been very healthy back then. So, uh, this continued where I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. And it was averaging about 40 people a day. So one day, I got a white jacket. I made this beehive. This little beehive. I made this attachment for a vacuum cleaner. And the real hard part was figuring out the correct size for the nozzle because you don't want to suck in the whole bead into the vacuum cleaner. You want to catch them by the head. Okay. And I made a system. And they came and I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last day. This is a free treatment. 
I said, I am not going to make a price on it, but everybody who gets stung has to leave some money on the table. And I stung about 40 people. One woman says, you're a crook. You're charging me for a bug. Yeah. And uh, another man says, here's $100. Another man, he's, another woman, she says, here's 50 cents. You know. Anyway, it dropped down to about 40 people a month when they had to pay something. <laughs> and uh, as the publicity, the, the, the effect of the publicity wore off, I can walk down the street now and nobody asks for my autograph. <laughs> the, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it was rough. It, but uh, as it, I don't think I did 10 to 20 people this year. So they, uh, they are helped. And I have procedures which I made myself. There's no guidance whatsoever. And I'm not a doctor. I'm a television man. And everybody is allergic to the venom in, a, in, a, in anything. And you're supposed to be allergic to the venom. And yet, some people are more allergic. They're so allergic to something like strawberries or peanuts that they drop dead by eating one. So we have to be careful stinging people. And yet, we, we have a beneficial effect. The theory being that when you're injured, the body repairs it. So if you're injured here, the body sends repair material here. Sometimes it sends not enough, and when you're stung by a bee, it sends too much. So if you're injured there, put a bee sting there, and you'll get more repair material on that sore spot. That's the theory. Um, you cannot mix <coughs> bee stings with steroid drugs. They work opposite. Now, if you have a very bad illness, the doctor may give you a shot of a steroid, and within hours, you feel better. That steroid is relieving your body of the job and curing you. But bee stings are doing the, uh, making your body do the job. So your body has to fight your illness, and if you are taking steroids to turn off your body's fight, and you're taking bee stings to encourage your body's fight, uh, you wind up with a headache. <laughs> and that's all. So you don't have any improvement from either. Um, I, um, I have a system, and I, um, I take someone, come here, carpal tunnel. It's very useful for carpal tunnel. And I say, that's in this general area. Will you tell me where it hurts and do the feeling yourself and tell me where to mark it? So we'll find possibly four places in this carpal tunnel area where she has pain. And we will put a pencil mark there. Want my autograph? No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's where we will sting them. Now, you can sit down. Okay. Now, the, the next thing is, everybody's terrified of being stung by a bee. They come and they say, or they call, and they say, I'll be there tomorrow. And half of them don't show up. And if you call them, they say, I chickened out. <laughs> but half of them get there and they say, oh, it doesn't bother me. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I, I sting them, I, I mark the spot, and I, I capture a bee by the head. And I thought maybe we were going to do it here tonight with a vacuum cleaner, but I don't see it. But um, 
This plugs in the vacuum cleaner hose. This catches a bee, and we find the chill, the pencil mark, and the chill spot, and we stab the tail right there. I leave the stinger in there five minutes, and it throbs, and the venom works its way into the muscle. Then I pull it out, pinch it, and drag it out. And that's the treatment. Now, anybody comes, I say, one sting is the limit on the first visit. I want you to bring a relative to watch what I'm doing. I hope you have an EpiPen or some sort of a needle for in case there's an accident. And uh, you sign this paper. And you could pass out a copy to each person. Uh, yeah. You uh, sign this paper. It's written as a joke, but it's, it's, it's approved as very uh, substantial if you, if you have somebody who complains. So we make them sign this paper, which tells them that I am not a doctor, I am a beekeeper, and I am stinging them at their request. And I have the, on the back, I write their name, address, and phone number. I sting them one sting, and I watch to see how allergic they are to that sting. The sting has to swell the size of a coin. My preferred coin is a dime. That is a normal person. Uh, lacking that, I may want to sting somebody in here. I say, when is the last time you were stung by a bee? A honey bee. Something that left a needle in your skin and you had to remove the needle. Not some other insect with some other allergic venom. So I believe the immunity from a sting lasts one crop season and a little more into the next crop season. I don't trust your allergy beyond that. So I give them one sting and I look at the elevation. If it's the size of a dime, I say, I guess you were stung previously. That seems to be a normal reaction. We'll give you a second sting on that sore spot on your carpal tunnel. And two stings, my limit. Now, had an accident. Uh, I look for a swelling the size of a dime. I had a patient come in, no swelling whatsoever. That's a worse indication than a swelling the size of a silver dollar. So the man had no swelling. And he said, oh, I drove from Philadelphia to get stung, and you're only going to give me one sting. I said, I'll stretch it if you sign again, and I'll give you two stings. And he said, Philadelphia is a long distance from here. It was a long drive. He said, I want at least four stings. And I'll take responsibility, and he wrote it down on the back of one of these. I'll take responsibility. I want more than the recommended number of stings. And I gave him four stings. And I didn't realize the danger in somebody who has no swelling at a bee sting. That is somebody whose body doesn't know what to do, and the next time they're going to get stung, it will show the reaction. Your test will be the next time they're stung. So, uh, the man, thank you. You see, everything's fine. And he, he, get, and he dozed off in the chair. Oh. And I said, didn't you get a good night's sleep? Yeah, I, I'm just tired. I, and he dozed off. And uh, he stands up. He says, I better get going back to Philadelphia. I said, I don't like your color. Do you have sugar? And you're having a sugar attack? Are you, are you on heart medication? You forgot to take your pill? He says, no, no, no. There ain't nothing wrong with me except DMS. I said, you don't look right. Sit down a few more minutes. 
And he sat down a few more minutes, he turned white as a sheet. And, I, and he said, I want to go home, and I set him down on the floor, I stretched him out, I called an ambulance, I said, I have somebody here I think is having a heart attack. And, and uh, they took one look, and they said, that's allergy. And they gave him, they gave him, I think it was this one, Hamagard, Hamagard. They gave him a needle. And he popped right out of it. And then, of course, they don't know much about these things either. Um, they say, your life is in danger. You have to go to the hospital. And they took him to the hospital and kept him for four days observation. And then he drove back to Philadelphia. <laughs> so, uh, you have to be careful. Now, now uh, I want the people to learn how it's done and then do it themselves at home. Bees come in the mail. This is from Ferris Apiary in Maryland. And they come in this package in the mail. And you remove two staples and this slides to open it. And then you put an elastic band around it. And when a bee sticks its head out, you grab it and you sting your, your wife. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, he sells these on a credit card to everybody who calls and you get them by the week. Occasionally my hive dies out in the winter and I buy them from him and I get a package a week. But uh, that's how they get bees. Let's see. I made little notes. Don't forget to say, uh, I forgot to say, you can interrupt if you got a question. <laughs> um, I was very skeptical when I started, but I am not skeptical anymore because I have seen improvements. Uh, the, the, the best case that sticks in my mind is somebody who came to me and said, I have MS, I can't take off my jacket, will you sting me? And I stung him, and he got done, he picked up his jacket and buttoned it. He couldn't do that when he came in. But a week later, he was back for another treatment. It doesn't last. It, it, uh, an MS patient, I thought, my, my, an MS patient of 160 pounds would require 16 stings three times a week. I'm not a doctor. My estimation, my, my decisions, my, my procedure. <laughs> And the family has to do it. They can't, they can't keep coming back to me. And uh, you get the bees like this. You pull them out like that. Now I had one phone call from a lady in, Flo in Florida, but I didn't know she was in Florida. She says, I think I'm in your neighborhood. <laughs> and I ordered a package of bees to sting myself. And she says, I opened the package and the bees all flew to the window. <laughs> she says, now what do I do? I said, well, you catch one bee off the window frame and do the sting you wanted to do. And she's on the phone for the longest time and she says, I just can't do it. She says, I said, where do you live? She says, by Kennedy High School. And I said, I live by Kennedy High School, too. Why don't you just stop in and I'll sting you. I'll show you how you do it. <laughs> and I says, what street are you on? And she tells me. And I said, I don't recognize that street. I thought I knew all the streets. Uh, and I said, I'm on Preakness Avenue. She says, I don't recognize that street. <laughs> I says, what? What town are you in? And she said, Tallahassee. <laughs> so I said, let's go back to catching them off the window. <laughs> and I stayed with her until she caught a couple off the window. 
But, but uh, one of the tricks you tell them is to uh, put this in the refrigerator for a few hours and they move slower. That's all. Now, people have come to me and asked for me to give them a package of bees. I don't know how this guy does it, but I give up. Any bees I put in a package died before they got home. And I, I do collect them. I did. I had made a container and a vacuum hose and a screen and I fill it with bees, put in some food, hand them the package and say, now you can take this home and sting your wife and boom, boom. Some, the next morning they call and say, we wanted to, I want to give my wife a second sting and all the bees are dead. So, well, I'm not going to do it anymore. That's it. Now, uh, let's see. Anything I want to bring up? Oh. Um, am I going to demonstrate stinging somebody or is yes. with a vacuum cleaner? Well, I didn't bring my vacuum. You didn't bring your vacuum? All right, we, we can't plug this in a vacuum cleaner if we don't have a vacuum cleaner. Uh, really good lung power. I was even willing to be the patient. Uh, I'll be the patient, no problem there. All right. Um, and then precaution. Now, this is, bee sting therapy is practiced in many places more than in the United States. Over here, they seem to rely on more modern stuff, and they ignore what it can do. But there's a society called the Apotherapy Society. I used to be a member, and, uh, and they put out a, a bulletin, but then they changed to the computer, and it's so much work to find it and get it out of the computer, I gave up. <laughs> so so uh, they, the Journal of the American Apotherapy Society, and they recommend a lot of uh, a lot of things. A lot of things. I think the dues are seventy-five dollars a year. Uh, they recommend uh, the propolis, the uh, every everything from the beehive, the honey. In other words, um, to remind you all, because uh, I don't. I don't, I don't think you're old enough to remember World War I. I'm only 20. Huh? <laughs> you wouldn't remember World War I. <laughs> the, the army had first aid kits. Um, it was gauze pads soaked in honey. Mm -hmm. uh, the, supposedly the most medicinal honey is from New Zealand. Um, I forgot what, Maluka, Maluka honey. And uh, the, uh, the gauze pads are soaked in any honey and put on a wound will keep it soft and will drain it, pull out infection. Uh, honey draws water out of the air. You know, if you leave a bowl of honey on the table, it's going to spill. It's going to draw moisture out of the air and overflow the bowl. And when you have a fresh pad of honey on a wound, it's going to draw the infected fluid out of the wound and into the pad and twice a day they change the pad and you recover and that works on sometimes better than antibiotic because people sometimes have a resistance to antibiotic today. And uh, honey is a wound dressing. Um, you get all this information from the Apotherapy Society, and I'm not a member anymore. Now, apotherapy's it's apotherapy is practiced in many other countries more than here. Like, for instance, people from Russia have come and learned how to sting themselves. And uh, they said they do it in their hometown in Russia. Uh, people from uh, Egypt, all those Middle East countries, they, they do apotherapy. And uh, uh, it's, it's helpful. And still, 
One day I got a call from Spain and the woman wanted to make an appointment to come from Spain and be stung. She said, I can't find anybody. I don't know what to do. And I went to this apotherapy society and they compile a list of people who do this and I fixed her with an address of somebody in Germany who would do it and she didn't have to come to the United States to be stung. I mean, she didn't need me. She needed somebody who knew what to do. And Apotherapy Society is international. They list members in all the countries and I could refer them. I hope I'm speaking loud enough. That I, I'm never facing this way. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Um, um, all right, we had, a, we had an MS patient who was misdiagnosed. She was a little overweight and she was getting bee sting treatments. First she went to a doctor in South Jersey that did it, then she came to me. And uh, she's not responding too well but she's got the symptoms. And uh, you say, well, let's look into the other things. How's your diet? How, do you have mercury fillings in your teeth? Mercury fillings make a lot of people sick with unknown things. You know, unknown... The symptoms are there, but they, they're misdiagnosed. Anyway, I said, how much soda do you drink? And she says, oh, I love soda, but I play safe. I always use diet soda. <laughs> uh, I said, diet soda? How many cans a day do you drink? She said, 10 or 12. <laughs> uh, I said, oh, then you must buy it wholesale. <laughs> do you buy it by the case? <laughs> oh, yeah. We buy it whenever it's on sale. We buy several cases and we store them on the sun porch. Sun porch. How warm is it where you store it? Oh, it gets pretty warm. Well, did you know that these artificial sweeteners that they, they sell you to put in your coffee and everything else, do you know they turn to formaldehyde at a certain temperature? So she's getting formaldehyde poisoning. So stop your diet sodas and drink water. <coughs> She was better in two days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, let's see. The first woman I heard of who, who went on this was Pat w Wagner in Maryland. <coughs> and she was a bedridden patient. And she convinced somebody, is there somebody in this room? <laughs> she convinced somebody to come to her house and give her bee stings. And she had read it from, I think it was Dr. Moraes. He also thought he could cure people with bee stings. And uh, she asked some beekeeper to come to her house and sting her, and she talked him into it. And she got out of bed from being a bedridden <coughs> patient. And she became rather normal. I haven't heard from her in years. I, I don't know if she's uh, gotten back, but that pulled her out completely. Now, according to her, you get your required amount of stings every week, three times a week, and finally you reach a point where you know you don't need it. And you stop, and you can stop for a month or two, and then you realize you need it, and you take it. And that held her for years. And she did sting therapy sessions in her living room. And, uh, and she, uh, she went back to life. Like, so, uh, so uh, now, I, that's what I needed help with. It weighs about 40 pounds. Four frame hive. I keep it in my kitchen. They enter and leave through the bottom. So the bottom is breakable if anybody moves it. That's the trap door. 
that keeps him in. <laughs> but but uh, I have right here a little trap door, and it, I left it. I let them. Uh, I'm not going to break loose the propolis, but I reduce it to where only one or two can stick their head out at the same time. I use my vacuum to grab one by the head and let the door come down. And I sting somebody. And that's how I do it. And, uh, and that's about uh, questions. I'm, I'm sure somebody has a question. When you vacuum it, doesn't the bee go into... Hmm? When you're vacuuming the bee, doesn't it go into the vacuum? Well, that, that was a very difficult thing. To come up with a, a size of hole. Oh, so it doesn't go through. Oh, did I struggle with that? I soldered this to that and that to this, and, and finally I find something ready made, if perfect size. Mm -hmm. And uh, that worked. And then using an ice cube in a cloth was a sloppy. And I tried using freeze mist, which was uh, a chilling fluid. And I burned somebody a little bit, you know? So no, none of that spray freeze. And then I, I have this, which is a stainless steel rod with a rubber handle. So this you can put on and it numbs. And uh, let's see, you had a question. I had a question about <clears throat> louder, uh, make believe I'm deaf, because I am. <laughs> uh, for arthritis in the wrist, right here. Yes. What would be your recommendation of uh, of how often how often to give sting to relieve that well, arthritis? First of all, well, arthritis in one joint this seems to be very helpful. Mm. Arthritis in every joint it doesn't seem to do much. Now you have it in one joint. I uh, yeah I have it here and I have it here. Okay. I can I can work with it, but I uh, I would say I would say you feel. Have you been stung lately? Uh, yes. With the needles that you pull out of your skin? No, I'm a beekeeper. I get stung okay. by bees. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I would say find the sore spot. Find the sore spot. Put it on there. How about the vein? Do you put it right on the vein or you avoid the vein? Well, I always try and avoid the vein and yet I found when they sting me by accident on the vein, the sting doesn't go in that deep. Yeah. It goes around it. Um, now, you, uh, okay. you find the sore spot and you sting there. Mm -hmm. And I would say two sticks on each hand and you should feel more limber mm -hmm. and uh, you will know when you, when you got to try it again. Probably next time it gets uh, high humidity and rain mm -hmm. and uh, you can, you know. Now, for instance, if we cure somebody or help somebody with carpal tunnel, the pain is gone. But then, if they got it because they, they turn a switch every day, all day long, it, it comes back. Yeah. But if they're not doing something re repeatedly <coughs> that injures them, then they're all right. Next question. Well, uh, you, Louder. You said that this does not work well on rheumatoid arthritis? I don't even know the name rheumatoid. but. Uh, rheumatoid means it's all over. Right. I don't find much benefit. Now, try it. You don't know till you try because everybody's different. People die from one strawberry and you might love a bowl of strawberries. You know? And, all right, next. Yeah. Um, so it's a local, it's a local treatment. So if you got it in the shoulder, you get it in the shoulder. Yes. Now what happens if you're taking aspirin and you take it in the shoulder? I'd rather you didn't take an aspirin you don't want any on top of this. I, wa I want the, this to work. Correct. So you're saying it's antagonistic. Um, <coughs> I once had somebody who does this um, acupuncture. Oh yeah? Coming to me for bee stings. Acupuncture. Yeah, I've had several doctors come in, you know, sure. to be stung. But 
I had one, one who did, does acupuncture, and he would pick the spots, and I don't know how to pick the spots. And when he picked the spots with precision, and I had to get the needle in in precision, he got much better results. Okay. Much better. Next question. <coughs> Did you say the key was to leave the stinger in for five minutes? Is that what you said was important? All right. You got to make up your own rules. You might leave it in for ten minutes, but I feel that in five minutes most of that throbbing has stopped and the venom has entered the flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's when I take it out. But I do not want to take it out immediately. <coughs> Um, I've had all kinds of things. I had one lunatic came to me and I didn't know he was that bad. <laughs> and he wanted to be stung. And I worked him up to like 18 stings. And, and he, every time I ask you what I'm treating here, you don't answer. What am I treating? We're not going any further till I know what am I treating. He likes it. He says, I want to know how much pain I can take. <laughs> yeah. I had another woman, she came in for a few times, and she said, I want to be stung here, here, and here, and here. I said, I wouldn't do that till I know the kind of reaction I'm going to get, because you could swell and choke. And she says, oh. I says, one sting over here, and one sting over there. And let me know tonight how much that swelled, if it swelled any bigger than a dime. She didn't call. About a week later, I called her. She says, you're a crook. She says, I saw a beehive for sale, and I bought it. And it was only $40, and I stung myself wherever I wanted. <laughs> so, you, meet, you meet everything in the public. You meet everything under the sun. Not to do with bees, but I, I was in a house one time repairing wires. And the man had a brook a few hundred feet from his house. He detoured it through his living room and he put a screen on it where it entered and where it exited and he put a, a couch there and a fishing pole and he stocked it with trout. But you see everything. You see everything in this world. <laughs> so, um, Anybody? Oh, we're not going to sting anybody, are we? Yeah, we're going to take one out and do it on me. Yeah. We're not going to sting anybody unless we got a vacuum cleaner. No, we can do it. Open the door and pull one out. I'm not opening that door. Why not? Maybe no way. Stan, maybe there's one in the utility closet here. Yeah. Clean the floor. Yeah. Do people ever ask you to sting for wrinkles or puffy? You know. Belly? I can't hear you. People get Botox for their eyes. Do they ever ask you to sting for that? Botox. Uh. For beauty reasons, cosmetic. I've been asked to sting on the face without explanation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, on the forehead, around the temple, and this, that, and the other. That's what they're doing now. They're taking B vitamins. Uh, people to first of all, I have certain spots which I hesitate to sting till I see how they react. One is in the neck, yeah. and the other is in the ankles. Now, if you get stung in the ankle, some people have circulation that's poor and they can't put their shoes on for a week. So if they say I have a, a sore toe, would you sting it? I'm hesitant until I see how they react to a sting. The, the other question I have for you is how deep do you sting? Do you do full penetration? Do you do light stings? Do you vary that? Uh, the, it, the bee goes in as far as it goes in. There's, there was an epitherapy session at EAS. And that they, they said, said just do a test sting with a little just dot. Do little dot stings. Yeah. yeah, and they also sell a, a hypodermic needle with bee venom. Yeah. And the doctors do a little shot, a little shot, a little shot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. And uh, so basically, I have one more question. This uh, this treatment it's good against inflammatory afflictions. Yes. That means the itises. Yes. Now, the after effects of Lyme disease. It's been very helpful. After effects of Lyme disease. We mean. You mean people get joints. People get Lyme disease, and they get they have to take the antibiotics. Yeah. And then when they're done, they have one joint that bothers them. That's because it's And that's helpful. Joints. The bee sting is helpful. Okay. Until my friend. And uh, I'll be your doctor. there's there's a lot a lot of kinds of people you meet. I had one woman came in and wanted to be stung for cancer and uh, I I, I I couldn't say no. I said, there's the beehive, you sting yourself. But I want you to go to a doctor. So she did go to a doctor after she stung herself. I don't know. <coughs> so, Ma'am, yeah. hi. Um, people that have horses, they do chiropractic on them and they do massage therapy and they do acupuncture. Does anybody ever ask you to sting their animal? To sting an animal? Yeah. No. So that's, that's I've been thinking of my own dog. Yeah. For our, they have, they have but my own dog hears the hum of a bee, and <laughs> his arthritis don't hurt. He runs. <laughs> I have a dog that's been hit by a car many years ago, and he walks on three legs. Mm -hmm. And yet, if he sees a cat, all four legs work just fine. <laughs> Drag it or not. And I, I wanted to sting him, but like if there's a, a bee on a clover and he's walking by, he'll sit there and growl at it and bark at it and snarl at it and, and run away. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever had anyone from the pharmaceutical or medical industry approach you and ask you about what you're doing and try to learn from you? What am I doing? Have you ever had any people from ph the pharmaceutical industry or the medical industry come and talk to you no. to learn? No. Oh, okay. Have you ever had anybody's medical doctor tell you? I had people from NASA, I think, come to ask about the scale hive and uh, I had people from that goofy music television station. MTV? MTV? Huh? MTV? Yeah, MTV. The one you wouldn't want in your house. Right. <laughs> uh, that uh, I, they came and they bought a, a two frame nuke with bees in it and they wanted to. They took video of smashing it, oh. and they thought they were going to have, you know, wild time. They smashed it, and nothing happened. And they paid me, and they left. <laughs> so, That's weird. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Is, is the louder? Is the benefit? Only from honeybee venom, or are there other, other venoms? That's a good question. Like a wasp, and it's coming uh, over and over again. One of the doctors at one of the meetings of the Apotherapy Society said he believes any venom is suitable to stimulate the body. And he wants to try cobra venom. Oh, boy. <laughs> the loop, cobra venom. And he may have something there. Now, the venom from the hornets is entirely different than the venom from the honeybee. And the, the allergic reaction to these protein-eating insects is stronger than the, the, uh, the venom from a sugar-eating insect. Now, those, those hornets are on a protein diet. They eat bugs, ants and caterpillars and charcoal grills and garbage pails and anything with protein. But uh, they don't do much with sugar. Okay? Yes? 
I, I can get stung 30, 40 times with a honeybee, and it, it, as long as it's not in a nerve or certain, yes. sometimes in the fingers, mm -hmm. it's, it's usually forgotten. You know, you laugh about it with your other beekeepers. But when I get stung by yellow jackets, I find it to destroy the flesh in my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you tolerate 45 stings. I, I, I could take 100. Oh, oh okay. you can take. No, I thought that's what you said. You tolerate. I, did, I, I said 45 recently. But I, let's go with the 45, but with the honey, with the yellow jacket, I get stung, I can see my flesh harden up on my hand as it's yeah. there. Yes. And, and, and I'm glad you just answered that question, because I always did think it was much stronger. I always thought the, the yellow jacket was the strongest to me. Okay. All face hornets were maybe... Protein three, diet, yeah. Yeah. And maybe the paper one. But I do believe if you got stung with them on a schedule, you could build up an immunity to them just like you build up an immunity right. to these. Where it wouldn't start welting the skin. Yes. Months for it to, or weeks for it to heal back up. To digest itself. Do you know much about antibodies? Hmm? Do you know much about antibodies? No. Okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, well, I, I've covered everything I feel like and, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the hornets, yellow jackets, and snakes have a venom, and I imagine you build up an immunity to them, and I, I imagine that could be beneficial. And, uh, you know. Anybody else? Yes, sir? You mentioned your hive scale. What do you do with that? I have a scale hive. In fact, I have two. And I take their weight every week. And that tells me if they're coming or going. And uh, yeah, this year was a freak year. Um, we didn't have any normal time when they should have gained weight. They didn't. And then came the, the uh, July when it's usually finished. And that's when it started. Yeah. And um, let's see, a volunteer can pass these out. I don't know, I got about 25, 30 copies. I'd, uh, scale weights. Okay. I, I'll give, I'll give the other side. We'll split it this way. Um, that's also got my card on it if anybody wants to call me. Uh, but scale weights for this year, the complete year. And uh, the bees are now on a losing streak, but um, they gained up till recently. They, they've been, I thought I was going to have to feed them all winter, and no. But um, I've, I've concluded, I guess, right? <laughs> He's going to kick me out. be up here to answer any questions if you want to talk to him. In the meantime, we have refreshments, so why don't we take a short break?